Hello everyone and welcome to my summary and review of Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. This is a book that has been recommended to me by a few older men in my life who found great benefit from reading it. Now that I've read it, I can see why they like it so much. It's a book that seeks to give men freedom to be men in a world that is trying to suppress their masculinity. For those who have allowed their masculinity to be suppressed, a book like this might be just what they need to break free from this captivity. With that said, I personally did not love the book as much as they may have. The author speaks a fair amount about God and the Bible throughout the book and often makes parallels to biblical characters to make points. I personally think he is stretching certain things in the Bible a little bit too far in order to do this. If that sort of thing doesn't bother you, then you probably won't have any trouble reading this book. Just know, this is not a book on theology. With that said, this book is effective in breaking men out of the mold society is placing on them. Just as a side note, this book is also on Jordan Peterson's reading list if that means anything to you. It doesn't to me, but this is YouTube. So let's get into it. A man's heart reflects the man. Proverbs 27, 19. Eldridge opens the book by laying out a few concepts. His first main point is about hunting one of the most elusive prey of all, a man's heart. Eldridge says that every man's heart is filled with fundamental questions like, who am I? What am I made of? What is my destiny? And that these questions cannot be answered by mere speculation. Rather, they must be answered through experience. We cannot truly know what we are made of by sitting in the safety of our own home and contemplating things. We must go out into the dangers of the world, into the wilderness, the unknown. This is where a man truly learns who he is. You cannot become a man by watching other men on TV or reading books. You have to experience it for yourself. Eldridge says that every man's heart has been lost throughout their life due to endless hours working soul-sucking jobs, phone calls, and texts with purposeless careers that require men to be tame and submissive with good manners rather than adventurous, daring, and free. All of society is trying to trap and tame a man's heart and use it for their own advantage, and society has largely been successful in this endeavor. Men have become what society wants them to be. The age-old question of where have all the good men gone can be simply answered by Eldridge, you have turned them into women. Is it any surprise that gender identity is so confused in our modern age? Throughout every boy's life, they are told to sit still, behave, or stop, that's too dangerous. And if they don't settle down, then we drug them. Boys are three to four times more likely to be diagnosed with ADD. Eldridge compares what has happened to men in society as a lion trapped in a cage. They have the true lion spirit in them deep down, but it has been suppressed for so long that it can be difficult to bring it back up. He then points his finger at the church. The church has convinced every man that God created them to be a good, harmless boy. Not dangerous or scary, a man must be clean, shaved, well-dressed, and well-behaved. Never offensive, never standing up for himself, just obedient and safe. Turn the other cheek is what boys are told over and over again. Simply saying this statement and allowing no nuance is not helping anyone. Is a man supposed to turn the other cheek when someone attacks his family? A weak pacifism is what many churches teach their boys, and in doing so, they are emasculating their men. Eldridge challenges everyone to walk into your average church and ask yourself, what is a Christian man based on what you see? Everyone would have to admit that a Christian man is boring and tame. Eldridge says, some women want a passive man, the church wants a tamed man, the universities wants a domesticated man, corporations want a sanitized, hairless, and shallow man. Everyone wants a man to be something that they are not. This is why men have lost their hearts. The way the church teaches children about Jesus doesn't help boys either. In every kid's book, Jesus is petting sheep and holding children in his lap. They never show the parts where he is disputing with the Pharisees or rebuking them for their hypocrisy. Or when was the last time a kid's book had the scene of Jesus making a whip and flipping tables? Let's not even begin to talk about how the book of Revelation describes Jesus. We teach kids that Jesus was just a nice guy and never did or said anything mean ever. Is it any wonder that boys hightail it out of church as soon as possible? So here is the invitation that Eldridge is extending to all his readers. 
Do not ask the question of how do I become a better man. Ask what makes me feel alive. There are three things that all men have a desire for. A battle to fight, an adventure to live, and a beauty to love. These three things are at the core of every masculine heart. They may have been lost or misdirected throughout a man's life, but they nevertheless are ingrained into every man's heart. So let's start with the battle to fight. Look at young boys and the games they gravitate towards. They like games that involve violence, danger, and battle. The video games boys play all revolve around battle and victory. They don't like games that have no competition. If you tell a boy that they have to play a game where the goal is to build relationships and cooperate, then they will say, so no one wins? What's the point of playing? Boys need to feel like they are fighting a battle. They need to know that they are beating someone. This natural desire of a man's heart will sometimes need to be played out in a very real way. It is this desire that gets men to storm the beaches of Normandy, to charge at a human wall of spears and shields. If you give a man a purpose to fight, he will do it. Like it or not, there is something fierce in the heart of every man. But this warrior spirit may have been lost throughout life due to neglect. A man must rediscover this spirit. Every man wants to be the hero, and we know this based on the films men are drawn to. Men love movies about valor, honor, bravery, heroism, strength, freedom, and adventure. And this leads us to our next universal desire, an adventure to live. Eldridge uses a few examples of great adventures, but I want to use one I think many young men can relate to. Think back to the first time you played an adventure video game. Maybe it was a role-playing or open-world game. For me, it was Legend of Zelda. I remember booting up my GameCube and putting Wind Waker in. I remember how it felt to sail the ocean and discover islands and caves. I felt so free to go where I wanted, to do what I wanted to do, and to discover, to go on quests and adventure wherever I wanted to go. I love the feeling of adventure. It should be no surprise that most games we play revolve around some vast adventure where we are the hero, growing stronger, honing our skills, and finally defeating the final boss. All men crave this adventure. But that's not all men want. Eldridge says that it's not enough to just go on an adventure and to be a hero of just any story for no particular reason. Men want to be the hero to someone in particular. A man wants to be the hero to a beauty. He wants to save the princess and to be seen as a hero by her. He wants to sweep her off her feet and to slay the dragon. He wants to earn her respect and admiration. Men need a reason to be the hero. This is why when men go off to war, they carry a picture of their loved one in the pocket next to their heart. They have to have a why. Adam was alone in the garden and God said it was not good for him to be alone, so he made Eve for the man. Eldridge, in contrast, shows that women also have these three basic desires, but they're slightly different. Rather than wanting a battle to fight, they want to be fought for. Instead of finding their own adventure, they want to be taken on an adventure. And finally, they want to be the beauty that is loved. Eldridge tells a story of a young woman who was being pursued by a man. The man dropped his whole life to try and win her and follow her. She said something along the lines of, he made me the adventure, and I don't want to be the adventure. I know where that road goes, and it's boring. Take me on an adventure I don't know. Now before giving the solutions to these three primary desires, let me first cover a few key points that should be noted. The first major point is the idea that Eldridge calls the wound. This wound is something that usually happens in a boy's life that can damage his ability to embrace his manhood. Manhood is not something that naturally occurs for a boy. It is something that is bestowed upon a boy by older men in his life. From birth, a boy will cling to his mother as a nurturer, but eventually, a boy must learn to leave his mother's breast and become independent. A boy who fails to do this will become a man-child. Mothers generally do not want to let their boys go into the dangerous world, and if the boy has no father to pry the boy away from the mother, the boy will remain there in a state of weakness, clinging to the mother forever. Mothers who have poor relationships with their husbands are all too happy to replace that desire for love with the love from their children, further exasperating their desire to keep their sons close. Manhood is not bestowed by mothers, it is bestowed by other men. 
This is why in many cultures, there are rites of passages for young boys going into manhood. They almost always involve taking a boy away from the mother and placing them in the wilderness alone or with other men. This is essential to becoming a man. However, sometimes men in a boy's life can cause a wound that forever hurts the boy and may hinder his ability to become a man. Eldridge tells a story of a boy who was always a little more effeminate than other boys. His father was always embarrassed by him, and one day while his father had friends over, the boy brought a doll in that he had found in the dirt and cleaned up. And he said to his father, Look dad, I made her pretty again. His father was embarrassed and said, Why are you such a f These words rang in the boy's head forever and wounded his soul preventing him from becoming a man. Eldridge says this wound does not have to be permanently crippling, but it can be. It can be healed, but it takes work. Another important point that Eldridge makes is the idea of men being exposed as fraudsters. You may have heard the phrase, fake it till you make it. This phrase is what most men feel like they are doing in life. Men's greatest fear is to be exposed. This exposure is done when they are faced with challenges. When a man is faced with a dragon to fight, everyone will see whether they were all talk this whole time or if they really do have what it takes to win. Many men know they don't have what it takes, so they seek outlets that help them to feel like men without having to do anything difficult. If a man is intimidated by women, he will cling to pornography in order to feel like a man without actually having to do anything. He can get all the enjoyment from porn without any of the responsibility of taking care of a woman or forming meaningful relationships. He can hide in his porn and feel like a man, but he knows deep down he's a fraud, and this is why so many are embarrassed when their sin is exposed. It's not just porn, it's many things. It could be gambling, sports, video games, anything to fill that void, anything to make you feel like you are on an adventure without ever actually going on one. So now that everything is laid out, all the depressing parts that show how flawed everything is, let's get to the solution to the problem. Eldridge didn't just drag men through the mud for no reason. He does have a solution. So how can a man win his heart back? It's not going to be easy, but there is hope. The first step is to find a battle to fight. It can be anything that really makes you passionate. You have to figure out what your why is. What makes you want to get out of bed in the morning? Something you can't wait to start every day. It doesn't have to immediately be something that changes your direction in life, but it has to be something that gives you life. You don't have to quit your job tomorrow, but you do need to find something that makes you feel alive. It may entail changing careers, but it may also be finding a cause to fight for. If you happen to be very passionate about family, then start focusing your energy on that. It may be some social cause or some great evil in the world that you would love to see end. Find that battle and go fight it. The next step is to find a beauty to rescue. Find someone you want to love and cherish and pour out your love that is hidden somewhere in your heart. Don't just be a hero to everyone. Find someone who you want to be the hero to. Find someone to love. This is a reflection of God. God is love. God did everything he did because of love. The sacrifice he made on the cross was for love. The greatest stories always have love at the center. Find someone to love and do it with all your strength. The last thing Eldridge says to do is to find an adventure to live. Men need to venture into the unknown, go into the wilderness and explore, live an adventurous life, take risks, be bold, live a full life. Do not allow yourself to be trapped building someone else's dream. Without this adventure, you will be stuck chasing counterfeit adventures. To end this summary, I want to share some of my thoughts on the book. The reason I found this book to be somewhat boring at times is because I feel like I read it too late in life. I feel as though I had already gone through the rites of passage into manhood and found my adventure to live, battle to fight, and beauty to love. Maybe this book would have been more helpful to me earlier in my life when I was still trying to figure out my way through things. Maybe I'll share my story in another video, but I think Eldridge is generally right about these basic needs for a man. Having a purpose and a reason to get up every day is crucial. Waking up to work in a sterile and safe environment every day is sure to kill the soul of even the greatest of men. Get out there and feel some danger and your soul will come alive. 
I don't know if I would say that these three things are universal by any means. I have read about many men who did not find a beauty to love, and they lived very fulfilled lives. But generally speaking, he seems to be right. Ultimately, my advice to anyone out there who is struggling to feel alive would be to seek God. Seek His will for your life and trust Him. He will give you all the purpose you could ever need and more. Well, that's all I have for this book. Pick it up and read it if you think it would benefit you. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. And while you're here, feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.